If you remember from the first video, we were talking about second approximation. And in second approximation, we said, if you have a DC source here, like this one, and you can pick any number for it, whatever number, whatever value you want to use, 5 volts, 10 volts, whatever the case is, we said, the assumption we make for ideal source is that this source here does not have an internal resistance. There is no value for R here. It's zero. And if you have a load voltage right here, we'll call it R sub L, that's an adjustable value. So the R sub S, the resistance for the source, is actually zero here. That's assumption. That means what? This voltage here at any given time will always be 5 volts regardless what R sub L is. That is not true. That's not the case. The reason, if this adjustable, if you actually bring that value to a zero, that means you'll have an infinite current. And there is no source on this planet that gives you an infinite current supply. So if you do the math here, for a real source, it should look something like this. If we treat it non-ideal, we go, it's 5 volts here. You have actually an input resistor here, an R. Well, this, this doesn't look like an R here. You have a resistor here, a small one. R sub S here. Let's call it 1 ohm small value. That's actually what all the sources look like in real life. They have a small resistor in series with the source. Now this current will never be zero, I'm infinite. But if you look at that, trying to watch it, what will happen? Let's assume for the sake of discussion, if R sub L here, if it is equal to, I don't know, uh, 1 ohm. What's the voltage here? Then from here we can say that the load voltage is equal voltage division, that's the 5, times that resistor, which is 1 ohm, divided by the sum of them, which is 2 ohms. So you're only going to have 2.5 volts. You're getting half of that if this is equal to that. Well, if you increase that, let's say, to R sub L equals 9 ohms, then VL is going to be what? 5 times 9 over the sum of them, 9 plus 1, which is 10. That's 4.5 volts. Notice this number is almost 10 times that number. And we're still not getting 4.5 volts. I mean 5 volts. We're getting 4.5. Now what will happen if R sub L here jumps to 100 times that number, like 100 ohm? Then VL will equal to what? 5 times 100 over 101. And where's my calculator here? So 500 divided by 101, the voltage is 4.95, and that is close enough to be 5 volts. So when you have a voltage source, for this to be treated as an ideal voltage source, ideal voltage source, which means you will get all the voltage at the load right there, you will need R sub L to be greater than or equal to 100 times R sub S. This has to be 100 times bigger than this one at least. Then you can say whatever you put in here, that's what you're going to see right there. Neglect that resistor. Don't worry about it. But if it's not 100 times bigger than this, you really can't neglect that resistor. So if you watch the voltage source, if you're looking at the voltage cross, and you're getting a, a, a ruler here. Yeah. 
this is what the ideal voltage source should look like versus non-ideal. In this case, an ideal voltage source will have a value of 5, regardless what R sub L is. And this is R sub L. Doesn't matter what R sub L, that's an ideal source. Now, a non ideal source a non ideal source will look like this the voltage. So let's find out where this one here. Roughly, it's 100 times R sub S. When the load resistor, this is R sub L, when that load resistor, it's 100 times R sub S. This is 100 times this. Let's put a dotted line here. This is where the 5 is. And for this, it will look like this. It depends on the values that you put there. So the value really changes based on what you put in there. So for example, if this is the 100, I mean 1 ohm here, if R sub L equals 1 ohm, this value here is 2.5 volts. At 9, somewhere here, this value is what? 4.5. Once that number hits 100 times that value, then it does go to 5. This section here is known as the stiff region. From here on, this is your stiff region. That's what we call that. This is from this point on, you treat this just like an ideal voltage source. Well, current source also does the same thing. So let's look at the current source. So a current source, an ideal current source again, the picture for it will look like this. This is what we use for current sources. Again, the reality of that, which is the second approximation, the true current source will look something like this. It's that number, so for example, if I use five amps here, I'll do five amps here, in parallel with a large resistor, not a small one, the voltage source is in series with the small resistor, but the current source always in parallel with the large value of R. R sub S. This is what we call second approximation of current source. Now, how big that value of R when I say it's big? In most devices, this is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of at least one mega ohms there. So let's say 10 mega ohms. So you really want it to be large. The larger, the better, but it has to be greater than one mega ohm. Let's say 10 mega ohms. So you want to have a very large resistor in parallel with that. Why? 
Well, let's see what will happen. Here's the circuit. Why you want it to be large? And this is, I don't know, 10 amp. So this is going to be, I'm going to be putting here, an adjustable value of R sub L. And I can pick any number there. But what will happen if I pick a number much smaller? Remember, now this source has an internal resistance equal to 10 mega ohms. That's R sub S. So let's look at some values. What will happen here when R sub L is equal to 1 ohm? Let's see if the current going through that is actually 10 amps. Because if it's an ideal source, I should be getting 10 amps going through that. should be nothing coming through this. Well, if I do current division here, we'll call this I of L. So I sub L current division is going to equal to the 10 times this one, which is 10 meg over 10 meg plus 1. And you can see this is going to be what? 10 amps. The math. Let's make that resistor a little bit bigger. Let's make that resistor 100 ohms. I sub L is equal 10 times 10 meg over 10 meg plus 100. That's still going to be close to 10. Let's make that resistor even larger. Let R sub L be 1 meg. Then I sub L is going to equal to 10 times that resistor, which is 10 meg over the sum of this and this. Well, if this is 1 meg, what's 1 plus 10? 11 meg. And let's see what that math is. So that's 100 divided by 11, and you end up with 9.09. A little bit less than 10. Now let's do one more calculation. Let R sub L equals 10 meg. Now you see the difference. I sub L is going to equal to 10 times 10 meg over 20 meg, and that will give me 5 amps. Oh, it's no longer 10. So as the value of that resistor increases, once that value actually becomes 10 times bigger than this, we lose it. That source is no longer ideal source. You can't treat it as an ideal source. So when you look at the graph for a current source, if you're trying to graph it, there we go. This is R sub L, and this is 100. We want it to be 100 R sub S there. or divided by 100, not multiply, you want to be smaller. As long as this one equal to R sub S divided by 100, less than that, 100 times smaller, the value should look like this. As long as less than that, is going to be like 10 amps in this case, whatever the value of the source, that's 10 amp. But once it starts to increase, then start to drop. 
So this is our stiff region right here. That's the stiff region. So the rule for the current source, the stiff current source here, or stiff region, happens when what? When R sub L is less than R sub S over 100. Or another way of saying it, if R sub S is bigger than 100 times R sub L, you have a stiff region here for a current source. For a voltage source, a stiff region when R sub L, not R sub S, when R sub L is greater than or equal to 100 times R sub S. The equal sign doesn't really matter. I mean, it should be greater, greater or equal. It's not a big deal. It's not going to make much of a difference here. So as long as the value is bigger than 100 times of R sub S, we'll be in a stiff region for a voltage source. Here, as long as R sub L is 100 times ender, not, or R sub S divided by 100, the ratio there, you're going to have a stiff region, or R sub S is bigger than 100 times times R sub L. You want this one to be 100 times bigger than that, then we can treat it like this. But if R sub S is not 100 times bigger than R sub L, we can't treat it like this. We have to treat it like this, and we have to include all the values, do the calculation the way we did here. So that's really what the second error is, or second approximation is when we approximate the voltage source as an ideal source and the current source as an ideal current source. They are ideal as long as what? We meet certain criteria. Again, reminding you for voltage source, R sub L has to be greater than 100 R sub S. Then you can treat it as ideal. Current source, as long as R sub S is bigger than 100 times R sub L, we can pretend that this source is really this and neglect that resistor. And that's it on this subject.